Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the Apple watch series six has been out for a little bit over six months. I've been using it every single day and many of you have asked me to do a long-term review on it. So this is my edition version. This is the series six titanium edition version. And if I slide the band off here and get up close, you can see that here. So it says series six, 44 millimeter titanium, and it says ceramic case. So sapphire display or sapphire crystal. So you can see that there and I use it with a titanium band. So this is a nomad titanium band. And along with this, I also have my wife's series six Nike watch. So this is the Nike version. Again, as you can see here, it says Apple watch series six, and it's got the little Nike symbol there. So I've got both of these here and wanted to talk about how they hold up, whether or not you should pick one up based off the features and more. And so, like I said, I've been using this every single day. And one of the reasons I get the, the Sapphire display, whether that be the ceramic or the titanium or even the stainless steel is because this display holds up much, much, much better. And so I've bumped this into concrete and everything else, and it just doesn't scratch. So, it seems to be much more durable than glass. It hasn't shattered on me all the way back to the original Apple watch that I was using. I've switched to the series three regular aluminum one, and it has scratches all over it. So based off that, seeing how you're going to usually keep these for a few years, the Sapphire definitely holds up better. The titanium has held up really well for me. You'll see all the way around the edge, no issues there. And the bottom is also no problems there. My watch band has been used with a couple versions of Apple watch, so it's held up well, but it has some of the paint or coating coming off of it. That's pretty normal. Like I said, I've bumped others into bricks and concrete and it's kind of scuffed it up, but it's done nothing to the display of the Apple watch. So that's a really good sign on the aluminum version. This one is actually holding up pretty well. My wife, she was concerned about not using a screen protector on it. I forgot to put one on for her. I generally put one on that you stick on using water or some sort of solution and it holds up well, but she doesn't have one on here and doesn't have a single scratch on the display. So it holds up really, really well and no issues there. Of course, if you're pretty rough with it. Maybe you're working outside. I would recommend, recommend one with stainless steel or maybe sapphire. So this one's holding up well also. Now, as far as the overall use, well, one thing where this has come in very handy is when using it with a mask. If you're using watch OS 7.4 and you're running the betas, that's something I regularly do. And by the time you watch this video, it could already be out to you, but using that makes this even more valuable. Now that works for the series three and newer. So you'll have that option. But if I put this on my wrist and it's locked or unlocked rather, we'll unlock it. So now you can see, I have my mask on. I have my Apple watch on my wrist unlocked and my iPhone on the right. If I lock my iPhone, unlock it, swipe up, it unlocks immediately. And then on the watch, it says unlocked by this Apple watch. That's an incredibly useful feature these days and definitely a reason to have one of the newer watches. So let me take the mask off here. Now with the series six, you get the O2 sensor or blood oxygen. Now I did have an issue with this initially because this watch band isn't tight enough on my wrist. And so I had to use a different one. You can see it's, it wants me to stay still, but I found that I had regular failures of this because it was on my wrist and not tight enough. So unless you have a watch band, that's a little bit more tight on your wrist. It's not that great of a feature, but it will measure it throughout the day. If you have one of the solo loops or anything else, it's fine. Now, as far as the display on the series six, of course, it's always on. You can see it just went into the one Hertz sort of dim mode. And it's really nice when you tap on it. Of course, it's nice and bright. I'm using the Apple watch infograph modular. A lot of people ask me about this with the app called Lumi. So you have to buy the app Lumi. It tells you when golden hour is the best time to sort of take photos or video sometimes and tells you morning sunset or sunrise. So it gives that along with weather. I also use the little weather app in the bottom left my compass in the middle and then activity. You can see I haven't worn it a whole lot today, but I do wear it every single day. The overall use of this and display is really great because it's nice and bright this time around. It's even brighter, but it doesn't really cut into the battery life at all. So the display is nice and bright, no issues there. And in fact, my wife actually has her display turned down a little bit. So if we go into the settings, 
on my wife's, you can see the display is actually turned down a little bit because it doesn't need to be all the way up. It's so bright. So that's something that I think is really nice with these Apple watches, the series six. It's a little bit of an advantage. The smoothness of the chipset in here is really nice. Everything's just super fast all the time. If I go into an app, I hardly ever use on my Apple watch, like home, for example, it opened immediately. If I go into heart study, it opened immediately heart rate. It's just things I don't use all the time, but it's just super fast and it never feels slow. Like some of the older ones did. If I go into Memoji, you'll see it takes a second to load because I haven't opened it for a while. And most of the time, these apps are just really fast and I haven't had any issues with them fast enough that there's no problems. The speech recognition is great on them. Just like all the other Apple watches as well. And this is the cellular version. And while I don't use that a ton, I do go for walks without my phone. And that's really helpful. If someone's trying to get a hold of me, message me, I can see that here. Maybe someone's trying to talk to me on Twitter, for example, it's very nice to have that ability. Of course that costs extra. You don't need it, but if you want to use your watch without the phone, it's a really nice feature. Now, the other thing is battery life, battery life on this Apple watch has been really great. I've had it on this morning. It's down 10% and it's been on a lot because of this video and filming, but in general, battery life is pretty great. Let me take a look at my wife's here. She should have the same. We'll go home swipe up. She's at 98%. So I've been wearing mine a little bit. She didn't put hers on first thing this morning and it seems to be doing just fine. And it will easily last me a day and a half or two days with regular use. If you're using it to work out and stream music to headphones or AirPods all day, you're going to go through the battery a little bit more rapidly and it does seem to make a difference, but the display, the always on display doesn't seem to really affect it much. Now, if we go into settings and then we go down to battery, We'll go to battery battery health has been pretty good too. So if I go down, we'll go to battery health. You'll see I'm at 97% capacity. That's putting it on the charger every single night, using it all day long. That's pretty typical of your iPhone, your iPad, your, your, Apple watch, MacBook, whatever batteries degrade over time. And the battery health on my wife's watch is a hundred percent. So for some reason, hers is a little bit different. I put mine on a third party Belkin charger. She puts hers on the one that comes with it and it seems to be just fine. Either way, she has a smaller battery, but for some reason hers is at 100%, mine's at 97, but batteries do degrade over time. It's normal. I'm not too concerned about it. And it seems to last me a couple days. No problem still. Now, if you had a previous version of this watch and you were thinking, should you upgrade to a series six from a series five? I would say from a five to a six, probably not, but anything before this one, I would upgrade to it. Not only for the new O2 sensor and all the other features, but the always on display and everything else, just make it a much nicer watch with the extended battery life compared to say a used series five, for example, it's great as far as that goes. And of course this year there should be a series seven, which I would expect probably around September. So there have been some rumors saying that it could have everything from the option to check your, your actual blood sugar level. I'm not so sure about that. That would be incredibly helpful for those that could use that, but the features on this are great. The battery life is great. And my dad actually uses this regularly as well. A series six with basically everything he does all day long without his phone with the cellular version. It's what he uses to respond to everyone via text and everything else. So it's definitely super helpful if you want to use it for me, the display is a little bit small as far as responding to messages and using voice all day. I just tend to gravitate towards my phone for that. Now, something I get asked all the time is how water resistant is this? Is it safe to shower with? Can I wear it in a pool? And absolutely you can do that. Apple has advertised it as that. And I've swam with the Apple watch. You can shower, wash dishes, get your arm under the water. No issues there. I probably wouldn't go deep sea diving with it, but other than that, you could use it for everyday use and just go swimming with it, measure your workout while swimming. And of course you have the water eject feature as well, or if you swipe up from the bottom, scroll down a little bit, hit the little drop here, and then you can turn the digital crown. And using the speakers, it ejects the water out of the watch. So it's definitely something you can do. No problems with it whatsoever on any watch I've ever owned. No issues with water entry or being damaged from that. Now, finally, I wanted to talk about the bands a little bit. This titanium band is great, but like I said, the O2 sensor doesn't work well with it. So 
The braided solo loop, this is size 10, for example, works really well for me. I have no issues when I'm using this because it's a little bit tighter on my wrist. So whereas this titanium band is a bit loose, because it's got links in it and you have to size it and it's sized properly, but because of that, it, it's just a little bit loose. But if I take this, this newer braided solo loop, oops, I got it upside down here. If I take the newer braided solo loop and put it on my wrist, it's easier to get on my wrist. It's super comfortable and it's tight enough, not super tight. I can get my finger on it under it, but it's tight enough to register O2 levels throughout the day. So if you're going to use that feature a lot, I would recommend this or maybe the solo loop, the silicone one or something along those lines. I wouldn't leave it a little bit loose or as you won't really get the benefit of that particular feature. You could also use this band. My wife really likes these nylon bands, the nylon loop. And this is something she prefers. It's nice and soft. At first I thought I wouldn't like it, but it's nice and soft. This is the Nike version, but it's comfortable and it's Velcro as well. So something she really likes and she looks for these, these Nike ones with these different designs on them and finds them very, very comfortable. So any of these that hold it a little bit tighter to your wrist is probably better for all of the different sensors. But if you want something that's a little bit more premium, of course, you've got this option from Nomad or others as well. I'll link this in the description below. So that's how I use my Apple watch. Now it's probably not the same as other people that use it for fitness all the time. And I probably should use it more for that, but you can see all the different apps I have on here. I generally use it for maybe an outdoor walk, but using it for fitness with fitness plus, for example, works great. So if you're using it for that, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What do you use this for? Do you use it with maybe AirPods when you're going for a walk or a run or whatever you're doing? Let me know in the comments below. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.